Say you're trying to solve a performance-critical problem like software-defined radio or high-speed data acquisition. You know, anywhere where our normal processors really can't get the job done in software. Yep, that's where things get really tricky really fast. Most people use something like FPGAs, coupled to conventional processors, with the FPGA doing the heavy lifting while the conventional processor does the housekeeping and administrative tasks. Oh yeah, uh, conventional processor, do you do Windows? <laughs> sure, that sounds simple enough on paper, until you actually try to do it. There's a ton of engineering effort involved in plugging all the pieces together. Analog to digital converters, host to CPU, FPGA's memory. And the bad part is, once you get all that stuff working, you're just at the starting line for your project. You've already done a huge engineering project, and you're just at the point of having the platform for your real design work. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody would build that platform for you, and then you could just start working on your actual algorithm and design. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Building a hybrid computing platform from scratch is a huge and complicated project. Luckily, someone has already done that work for you. My guest today is Justin Braun from 4DSP, and we're going to talk about how you can use pre-designed platforms to dramatically simplify these complex computing and data acquisition problems. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on either or both of the links below the player to get more information about 4DSP's FMC and Software Defined Radio Products. Hi, Justin. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. I'm glad to be here. Great. So a lot of us jump into a project like data acquisition or SDR with FPGAs, and right away we realize there's a lot going on here. Paint us a picture of what is involved, and how can we start to simplify this problem? What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today we're going to be talking about typical data acquisition and SDR platforms. Okay. We're going to go over the conceptual level, some real prototypes, and what can make it better. Modularity, okay. reusability, tool simplicity. Sounds good. We're also going to go from the development concept to actual deployment. So migrating your design from prototype to finished solutions and offer our integration services. Fantastic. Okay, let's start with data acquisition. Let's talk about what a typical system looks like. Okay. At 4DSP, we specialize in high-speed data acquisition products using FPGA-based technology. Okay. By design, an FPGA offers tremendous flexibility and a lot of resources for processing. Mm -hmm. The FPGA is centric to the architecture of high-performance data acquisition and real-time signal processing platforms. On the front end, we have analog to digital converters, one or several. The FPGA requires an interface to these for the digitized data to reach the signal processing blocks inside the FPGA. Typically, one would want to see more memory available for some buffering before or after processing. Sure. This also requires an interface inside the FPGA for the data to be transmitted in either direction between the signal processing block and the memory. Mm -hmm. Now, we would want a host computer to control the way the data flows through the FPGA. The interface can be Ethernet or PCI or any number of other interfaces. So, tell us what this platform looks like. There are many different types of data acquisition platforms available in the marketplace. But what you're looking for when you start a project is a cost-effective solution that will work out of the box and fits on your desk as a standalone solution. We are seeing many of our customers who want to design around the Xilinx and Avnet development kits because it's readily available, it's relatively inexpensive, and it is typically on a short lead time. Sure. The last thing you want is to have to wait another few months to start your project because of hardware availability. Very true. Here we show a Vertex 7 development kit that offers some DDR3 SD RAM, an Ethernet port, some PCI Express capability, and a couple of FMC sites. Those Very are nice. FPGA mezzanine cards. It can be easily connected to a host computer. For the analog to digital conversion front end, you can choose the card that best meets your requirements. For example, the FMC 116 with 16 channels and 125 mega samples per second each would be a great fit for an application with a high channel count and a relatively low sampling frequency. Okay. If you need to digitize at a faster speed, 
then you may want to look at the FMC126, which can digitize a single channel at 5 giga samples per second. We offer a dozen FMC cards with A to D devices that have different characteristics. The great thing is that these FMCs are plug and play. We do not deliver only a piece of hardware, but a complete reference design that runs a software application on the host computer, communicates with the Vertex 7 card and the FMC, and then digitizes the data from the FMC. Very cool. We provide all the hooks, the connections, and the interfaces so that the user does not need to reinvent the wheel and can instead focus on their application development. Very good. Essentially, the support package that comes with the hardware will save many months of work for the most experienced engineers. This can save a considerable amount of time on a project and allow the design team to focus on the more interesting portions of the project. Which we all want to do. <laughs> okay, so let's take the same kind of look at software-defined radio. What's the same and what's different. Well, Amelia, with the same ingredients as a data acquisition system, an FPGA, some memory resources, a host computer, you can get there really fast. The only thing you need to change is the front end by replacing some electrical circuitry designed to receive an RF signal, demodulate it, and digitize it. Okay. Maybe you also want to transmit, so you'll need a digital to analog converter, modulate your signal, and output it on an antenna. Your data acquisition platform has been changed to a software-defined radio platform by just replacing the front end. All right, so let's look at the platform for SDR. Okay, the SDR architecture we just looked at could use the VC707 like we showed for the data acquisition platform. Okay. However, it is also possible to use different hardware that can be even more cost-effective. It may not have the same processing capabilities, but the built-in flexibility will remain the same. Here we chose a Z board that offers an onboard processor with FPGA resources, some memory, an Ethernet port, and an FMC site. Very cool, I know those. While the Ethernet port connects to a laptop computer, the FMC site is populated with an FMC 30RF that offers a tunable RF range from 400 megahertz up to 3 gigahertz with up to 60 megahertz bandwidth. This FMC also comes with a reference design that works out of the box and makes it possible for a user to kickstart their development. Sounds great. So, Justin, so far what we've talked about sounds a lot like what you can do with traditional development boards. But you guys bring a lot more to the party, right? Let's dive in deeper and talk about some of the things we can do to get more flexibility and performance and toward our actual end application. As part of your project, you may have some more demanding requirements. After all, what we showed is a development platform, not a finished solution. Sure. With all the bells and whistles you might need. Mm -hmm. You may want to have more flexibility and performance, more memory resources, different types of devices, etc. All right, Justin, what's a blast module? That sounds cool. A few years ago, we created a type of module, a BLAST module. Okay. It stands for Board Level Application Specific Technology. All right. It's a very small form factor, about 21 millimeters by 25 millimeters. That's less than one square inch. It's a ball grid array, meaning that it can be assembled just like any other BGA during the manufacturing process. Okay. These BLASTs take advantage of the very versatile nature of FPGA inputs and outputs that can be reconfigured with a different functionality. A BLAST has 100 signal IOs connected directly to an FPGA. It has different power rails available and is double-sided, meaning that you ultimately save space when you mount it on the board. Okay. Blast came from the realization that a signal processing algorithm implemented inside an FPGA dictates what type of memory type should be used for an optimized implementation. For example, if you perform some long, fast Fourier transforms of 1 megapoints, you'll need to be able to address your memory in a random fashion every clock cycle for the fastest calculation time. Dynamic RAM is not suited for this process, but static RAM is. Mm. This is why the first blast we released had a QDR2 SRAM memory device on it. But for the same application, you may need to buffer hundreds of megabytes of data coming straight from your digitizer. In that case, DDR3 SE RAM would be a better choice. In another scenario, you may have a need to store data in a non-volatile device so that it's available during the next power cycle. A blast with 32 gigabytes of NAND flash will help you do that. If there's a need for using an application-specific device, a blast would be a right choice. We've got a blast with some JPEG 2000 video codecs available. By using an ASIC to perform the video compression, the user shares a lot of FPGA resources that can be used for a different purpose. Blasts make it easier to partition and optimize your processing for your FPGA-based solution. Instead of redesigning a complete FPGA-based product, which can be a six-month endeavor, designing a blast with the required functionality means that the development cycle is drastically shortened. The rest of the FPGA board never changes, 
the communication interfaces remain the same. So you essentially take advantage of using a proven FPGA-based product while adding some specific blast arrangements that suit your application. Very nice. This is one of our FPGA-based products with a Vertex 7 FPGA. Hey, okay, I know Vertex 7. This one is a 3U VPX form factor and offers some dedicated memory on board, 2 gigabytes of DDR3 SD RAM, but also has two blast sites available. You can choose which blast should be mounted on which site on our website. We have other products such as a Vertex 6 XMC card that has five available blast sites. That provides a lot of flexibility while maximizing performance. While we're talking about flexibility, this Vertex 7 card can be used with any FMC card, thus providing users a great deal of choice when it comes to choosing what their front end should look like. Okay. Justin, we've got a lot going on here. Software, FPGA design, blast modules, FMCs. How do we bring this all together and gel it into a design? How do we keep this from being a total mess? At 4DSP, we have created our own tool, Stellar IP, for streamlining FPGA design and reusing FPGA components. Cool, okay. It's a concept where major FPGA blocks are called stars, and they communicate through wormholes. A group of interconnected stars creates a constellation, a complete FPGA design. Cool, okay. In the software, each star corresponds to a collection of API functions that allow you to communicate with and control the star. Stellar IP provides simplicity through design partitioning, design reuse, and provides auto-generation of your top-level HDL file, and even creates an ISC and Vivado project for you. From there, all you have to do is open up the project, you can generate your bitstream. All right, very cool. So you're going to teach me how to do this, right, Justin? That's right. Here we have our schematic entry tool for FPGA design, Stellar IP. The design shown here is a reference design for the Z board coupled with our FMC 30RF. Instead of grabbing raw data from the receive channel, maybe you want to add a DSP processing block. Here we're going to make room for the DSP block. Okay, and this works just like a normal schematic editor, right? That's right. Now we're going to place the block. Okay. And then we're going to wire it in line between the FMC 30RF interface and the host interface. Great, okay. We'll also need to provide some additional connections. And we'll need to connect up some additional interfaces for software control of the star. Right, that makes sense. And now that your design entry is complete, all you need to do is go up to the Stellar IP tab, click Generate, and a Xilinx ISE or Vivado project will be created for you. Fantastic! Okay, Justin, I think I'm ready to get started. Where do we go from here? Well, today we discussed that when building a data acquisition or software-defined radio platform, we can start with cost-effective hardware that has reference designs available. Once a prototype is working in the lab, migrating to an optimized platform is easily achieved. The FPGA firmware and host software that was developed can be almost entirely reused, as is, if the 4DSP design methodology is applied. This reduces the overall risk for the project and ensures it can be completed on time and on budget. And if you need help with your integration project, we can help you with that as well. Okay, Justin, where can we go for more information? Well, you can visit our website, we have some videos available about the BLAST concept, Stellar IP, and of course all of our FPGA and FMC based products are also on there. Fantastic! Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Justin. Well, I'm glad to be here and I hope you enjoy your time in Austin. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can click on either or both of the links below the player. There you can get more information about 4DSP's FMC and software-defined radio products. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the On Demand section of eejournal.com.